Hi there, so let's move to tutorial 2. So in the previous one we focus on the uh, <coughs> in the convective term, okay, in the con convective flux. In this one we're going to focus in the diffusive flu flux, okay, but also we're going to see the influence of the mesh element now in gradient computation. Remember that in the diffusive we have gradients, okay? So again, you have this case located in this directory, but what we're going to do is to solve this domain, okay? This is a square domain, it's quite easy. This is the equation that we're, we're solving with these boundary conditions. So here we have this boundary condition in the, in the top. So with these boundary conditions and conditional uh, <coughs> and initial conditions, this problem has an analytical solution, okay? So we're going to compare numerical and analytical and we can get an idea of the influence of different discretization schemes. So what we're going to do is use different meshes, okay? Edge and meshes, triangular and polyhedra. So this is the ideal mesh, where as I say, this is the section right on the rule. In this case, yeah, this is the, the mesh to use, but most of the time you're going to end up using stuff like that, depending on your domain. So the analytical solution is this one. So this is a beautiful problem because of this. Um, we, we have this analy analytical solution to the with this nice behavior. So we can compare many things. So look at that. What we're going to do is play with the gradient schemes and Laplacian schemes, okay, and see the influence in our solution. As you see in the three meshes, A, B, C, you no know, X, a triangular poly, uh, we're sampling the <coughs> the value of the quantity, you no. Know? T is called T here in this mid section here in this line and see that they are all they all have the same value okay you compare also with an analytical solution so there is no problem but what is interesting here that this is the solution now how this quantity T is diffused but remember that behind this equation we have gradients so it's also interesting to see the behavior of gradients in different measures and different salt types okay so this is what we see here okay so now what we're looking and be careful this is the gradient of t this is your final solution and this is okay you compare with the analytical one and it's perfect okay but behind that the method is computing gradients okay and this is what we're looking here so see that they are very different okay so in the quad mesh the orthogonal one is a very nice behavior see here that you have this a little bit noisy Okay, but even though the behavior is this is noisy, see that the solution is perfect. And here you have noise, you sample the gradient in a line there, you get the behavior. So this is what now we're looking at this information behind doors, okay? So in this case, when computing the gradients in these two meshes that they are non-orthogonal, look at that, we're using a orthogonal method, which is not right. So this might have an influence on that. So then when you change that method, and again, we're looking at gradients. So see, orthogonal method, and then we adjust the numerics. We use a Gauss linear limited one, the one that it will do the correction according to an orthogonality, and look at their gradients that they are perfect, okay? They are very smooth. They are compatible to the one in the or orthogonal mesh. The same, the same will happen with the least square, okay? So see that you are using the wrong method in the <coughs> with, with the meshes or with the unstructured meshes, but then when you change it, limited one, see it's most behavior. But it's interesting that this is Gauss least square, you can compare with the Gauss linear and see that there are some differences. There is some noise here, it's something that is neglectable, okay? But then here you get even better, okay? So see that these have the tendency to give better solutions. So we're working in this. We're going to work in this case. Uh, here you have some exercise, okay? So you can play around here, and then we, we can discuss this during the Q&A session. So let's see what, what, what we have here, okay? So as you go to your cases, that one, you have it in 101 FBN in Laplace, and let me go here, Laplace, and you have three cases, okay? So you have orthogonal mesh, triangular mesh and polyhedral mesh, okay? So you have automatic dictionaries to create <coughs> to create the different cases. Here I'm going to do things a little in, in, in automatic, you know? So first, just to, uh, to make something, to show you something that basically here, remember that we are just adjusting gradients and Laplacians. That's all. See that divergence, none, because we don't have divergence. It was not like in the previous case that we didn't have uh, diffusive term. Okay, so we're going to focus in those terms. So, as you go here in run, run all cases, see that you have different setups. So, 
basically this set is going to run automatically C1, C2, and C3, and then it's going to use these methods. Okay, so let's run. I will run the first case. So see that is this one. This setup corresponds to orthogonal mesh, Gauss cell base, and then C2, which is the triangular mesh, is using orthogonal Gauss cell base, which is not the right method. Okay, so remember that as you go to SB skins here is where you set up that method so orthogonal is something that you use only with perfect meshes okay with meshes that you have a uh, low orthogonality okay so just to refresh your memory and let me go back to the size on the on the finite volume method okay so basically okay we have this equation so in the in tutorial one we focus in these two terms and now we're focusing this and this nothing here so let me go here and uh, 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 here so see that we have here about the diffusive flux so orthogonal you compute it using central difference and this is something to use when you have perfect meshes which is not the case in the in the in, in the two instructional measures where we have triangular elements and polyhedral elements. Okay, so this one is going to give problem. And then the other methods, the one that I recommend you to use is limited one or limited 0 0.5. You are doing this correction. Okay. So basically this is in what we're focusing here. That and gradient computation that you have it here. So let's run the first case. It's going to run, just to show you this, it's going to run all these cases automatically, okay? Then you can run it manually if you want. So you go here, let's say you run all, and it's going to enter into C1, which is, let me add here, this is the orthogonal mesh. This one is triangular mesh. And this one is the polyhedral mesh. Okay, so as you enter into e each case, you will see different files now because you are doing. In this case, it's doing the conversion to polyhedral mesh. Okay, so as you are curious, you, you want, you can enter there and see what is happening. So now that we have this first solution, so see that in this one we're running all meshes using the orthogonal Gauss cell base method. So now we can open Paraform. See that it, it's not finding the file, so that is not a problem, okay? So you press enter, and here you're going to have an, an state file, okay? This is the one that we're going to open to, and it automatically will compare these three cases. No? So this is a, an state file now that we don't need to do every, everything every time that we open the file. So you go here. First, let's see the meshes. Let me open this one. You press OK here and see that quad mesh, triangular mesh, and here you have the poly mesh. And we're sampling here, okay? So, now let's compare, again, let me open. Yes. Okay, and let me load another state. So as you go in part of you, this is T field, okay? So here we have the solution, okay? So we compare all the cases, so see that Quad triangular poly mesh. Okay, so see the solutions are the same. And also to point out, remember that the final volume method that as it is implemented, it computes the solution in the cell center. So when you see this point here, means that the solution has been interpolated, okay, or is smooth out. No, you are from the cell center you are interpolating to the nodes. So you see this nice behavior. But in reality, this is your solution. Okay, so see that is is uniform in the cells. And I can do the same here. Okay, so see that. And now you can see there the, the structure, the background mesh easily. Okay, so this is your actual this is your actual solution. So see that triang triangles and polyhedra there. So the is the solution is uniform in in the whole cell. So see that as you look at here at T, see that pretty much the same value. So this is a, a nice solution. But now if we go, and let me clo close there. OK, 
okay and we need to load a new state this one and this is the one related to the gradients now so now we're comparing the gradient so that is what we have behind doors that we don't see when we look at only when we look only at the field t so see that these are the gradients and see that this is in the quad mesh and see that you have this noisy behavior in the other mesh but this is only because we're using the wrong the wrong method okay so the laplacians okay the diffusive turns you need to add that correction okay so let me uh put this okay And okay, I want to see in the cell center. So see there that now we're plotting in cell centers and here also cell centers. So see that these are your gradients, okay? So they are a little bit noisy. This is not your solution, the solution is T, but this ha will have an, an effect, okay? So now how do we solve this problem? Well, to solve that problem, the only thing that we need to use is to use the right method. So, for the triangular polymesh, we know that the right method will be using, for instance, uh, here, let's see which one here we can use. For instance, the least square with gradient limiters, okay? So, you simply uncomment this one, comment this one. So, we're going to use section 7 uh, ta -ta -ta here. Let's be skin seven. So now that we're using these new schemes here, so it will be least squared just for the two meshes where you require to use that. Here you can do it as well, but there is no need because it's a perfect mesh. So it is okay to use that orthogonal one. So let me run. And while it's running, remember you have these methods, okay? Orthogonal is just limited for perfect, perfect meshes, which not not always will be the case. So this is the one that you should use. Okay, so limit it and just put this coefficient between zero and one. Recommended values is one when the mesh quality is less than 70, 0 0.5 when it's more than 70, okay? So we have a solution. Open part of you or part of one. And let me here load a state Mm, mm, mm. and I want to see let's see right ahead the gradients okay and when I open here the thing that you will see here immediately that now you don't have all that noise that you have we were having in the previous one that we were using another method so see that by using the, the right method we managed to stabilize you know, the gradient computation so see here there is there are some artifacts okay there is not a big deal so final mesh will solve that but see that is a much much better solution and let me go here and let's plot the solution in the cell centers okay so remember that this is your actual solution in your cell centers and i go here and if i zoom in see that you have you see there so here you have the poly here you have the triangles and here is giving some problems okay so this is not a big deal so usually there you you resolve that by adding better uh, more uniform cells you see that these cells there they are not very uniform so but see that nevertheless we get a very good behavior so this is the effect okay mesh non-orthogonality in computation of gradients and your final value so our final value t was perfect okay so let me go here and let me open a new one just to show T. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba. You go low state, part of you, and T. Okay. So the solution is perfect. Okay, the solution to what? And just let me remind you that we're solving this problem, this equation with these boundary conditions, okay? So the solution to that is this. See that in all meshes is perfect, and even there, now when you sample it, it's perfect, but the problems are in your gradients. So at this point, see that you have all these methods here, but it's up to you, 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 you can play with 
different methods just to see the, 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 the outcome. Okay, so in this case, you can go and run this script. This script automatically is going to run each of the cases, then you need to adjust the method, or you can enter inside each individual folder and you can play around with its different actions. But here, our main focus was the diffusive floods, okay? And you can draw your own conclusion. So you will see that all, all, of all these methods, the best one will be this one, the least square with gradient limiter is the one that is going to give you the best the best values independently of the mesh that, mesh that you are using, okay? But that doesn't mean that the other methods like the Gauss linear are worse, but it's up to you to, to choose one. But generally speaking, this square is a very good choice, okay? So at this point, okay, you are invited to play with this case. As you see, it's a beautiful case, analytical solution, very fast case. Okay, you will say that, okay, you're probably in your actual applications, you will never find this case. And it's true, but remember that what we're doing here is just playing around of with the discretization of the different terms that you have in your equations. And we know that in Navier Stokes equations and turbulence models, we have diffusive terms. So what we're doing here, you can apply it now when you are now solving your your complex problems. Okay, so that's all for your for, for this case. Okay, so remember that you have here at the end you have some 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 questions, some so an exercise there, so if you have time, just feel free to address that. And well, thank you for your attention. See you next video. Bye.